Hi guys, I'm Paul. I'm Bea. And in this video, we are going to talk about our favorite restaurants in the city of Valencia, Spain. Well, after trying all of the food spots that the blogs and the vlogs suggested, we have narrowed down our list based on our taste. It was kind of hard to come up with this video because we kind of wanted to put categories on them. One would be for the first timers. If you want to try the local Valencian cuisine, these would be the restaurants that we will point you towards. The second is going to be for the novelty. I love, I love a good show. I love good presentation. So I had to make sure that we have this list on there. And then the third one is going to be our personal favorites, like our go-tos, our repeat, the, the restaurants where we go to when we feel like, okay, we're hungry. Where should we go to? This is, these are the restaurants that we usually visit. Yeah. So these are our favorites, not necessarily Spanish food and we usually go to them when there's no special location. Please do note that we have sacrificed a lot and absorbed so much calories to make this video. So I hope you're hungry because the list is coming up after the intro. So if it's your first time in Valencia and you want to try some local Valencian cuisine, this would be the restaurants that we would recommend to you. The first one we've tried that I was really happy about is called La Pilareta. And they're actually famous for these local Valencian mussels called clochinas. And they just present it as a, in a bowl with broth and then at the same time I, I really like this place because it's right in the heart of the city and their of price El of El Carmen and their prices are really cheap really affordable it's also an old restaurant with a lot of history it's called La Pilareta because I think the owner was called Pilar and then I remember we were asking the waiter and he said that the family sold it to the current owners, but the daughter of or the granddaughter of Pilar still owns the building or something. So she still goes there and brings her friends over. So there was a little bit of history going on with La Pilareta. So we ordered the clochinas, Russian salad, and then uh, clochina croqueta. And the pescada frita. Pescadita frita. Pescadita frita. Fried, fried uh, fish, mojeronas. And now rice. we will eat. These are just half rations. This one and this one. This one and this one. Okay, this one. Mmm. The clochinas are more of a yellow color and they are softer and they are available around July and August. So make sure to go early August because we were there um, at the tail end of August and they don't, didn't have clochinas anymore. The, they just served us mejillones, but it was still good. And I, we just enjoyed that place because of the old town feel. So we highly recommend this place. Next one is my favorite. It's called Tasca El Botijo. And this is where we discovered a lot of different tapas, not like the typical patatas bravas or the typical like gambas. So this place is where I first tried tomato marmalade or mermelada de tomate. And it is glorious. So you should head on over to Tasca El Botijo. It is also in El Carmen. It gets really busy and I think it'll give you a nice feel of the nightlife of El Carmen. Is that the one that they serve with the deep fried camembert cheese? It's not deep fried. Oh, okay. But th that's a camembert cheese? Three, I think. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's good. And don't forget to ask for the local wine because the Valencian wine is great. Next is the Horchateria Santa Catalina and it's one of the oldest horchaterias in the city. As soon as you walk in, you're going to see artwork, the On tiles are painted and it's right next to an old cathedral as well. 
So it's just a very romantic, it gives you like this old city feel. You should try their churros con chocolate. Or actually, I didn't like horchatas, uh, Mexican horchatas, but I do like this Valencian version of horchata. And you eat it with the farton, which is you kind of dip the bread in the horchata. I like Mexican horchata, so... But this one is completely different. Like you're, you're not. If you've tried Mexican horchata before and you try the Valencian horchata, it's so different. But it's still good. I li- I really like it. It's very refreshing. It's light. It's served cold. Or you can order it granizado, which is ice blended horchata. Don't forget to try the bonuelos. Don't forget to try the churros and the fartons. The fartons are the ones that you dip in the horchata. Next is Los Gomez Taberna. So we enjoyed the paella here. And this was also around, not necessarily El Carmen, right? Is it oh, it's closer? close to the Ayuntamiento, which is the city center. Yeah. And uh, we chanced upon this place because originally the place that we went to didn't serve paella. And her cousin who was here uh, wanted to eat paella. So... We've At night time. So a lot of restaurants only serve paella during the day. They serve paella during the night. And we were glad that we did because out of all the places that we ate paella at, this is the one we've enjoyed. Uh, the flavor is perfect. The next one is Nuevo Oslo. I'm, we're just so glad that we went because not only did we get to enjoy uh, local Valencian style of bocadillos, the sandwiches, but we also got to meet the owner. We, we, we love meeting the owners of these businesses, so we got to meet him. He's awesome. Very friendly. His, his staff is really helpful. Like We struggled speaking in Spanish or Valencian, but they still tried to understand us, and really they were really helpful. Also good, cheap prices. Right, and they had uh, a row of all of the things that you could put into the sandwich. So, and then they have the prices there and the names so that you could, it, it'll be easier for you to make your own sandwich. Next one is Vuelve Carolina, which is the restaurant that we went to on my birthday. It was really nice and special because we got the tasting menu and it was also very reasonably priced. I think each tasting menu cost just under 40 euros and they had we had cocktails upon cocktails and the final bill was still just Pretty under good. 100 euros. I'm not a big uh, fine dining kind of person, especially when, you know, they serve it in small servings. Uh, but this one was really, really nice. The experience was really nice. The food was very different. So something that we haven't tried before. So I thought that... And I think that the chef is really uh, popular here in Valencia, too. Yeah. He has a lot of restaurants here in Valencia. So good job, Vuelve Carolina. Me encanta. Okay, last is Agua de Valencia. So you should try an Agua de Valencia, especially during the summer. It is an kind of orange drink with, I don't know what they put in there, but there's alcohol in there for sure. And you can go to Café de las Horas, which is, I think, the most famous spot for it. I, I love the, the feel. You, when you get to Café de las Horas, you usually sit outside because that's usually where there's free seating but because inside it's always packed because when you as soon as you walk in you'll know that you're there because there's just so much to look at and it's dark and it's like red it's like gothic yeah very gothic but uh, really enjoyable the next category is for novelty me I love a good show, I love presentation, and if you tell me a story about the food or the the restaurant, I'm sold. It's just so easy to sway me when it comes to those things. If it's something that you can like Instagram, that's that's his thing. I mean, I I like taking pictures of, you know, but not posting. What? Oh yeah, I do love posting. But that's the reason why we made this list is to cater to the people like me who like novelty. So first up that I really enjoyed is a place called Lulat. 
and it's kind of like a brunch place, but our friends Ron and Lauren just insisted that we try it because just like them, we love uh, dessert. We love, we have a sweet tooth. So Lauren, <laughs> Lauren said, you have to try this, especially you love ice cream. And as soon as we, we got in there and ordered, it was really simple. You just order, um, they present it with uh, the toppings on the side and then they bring you this huge chunk of ice cream and then they scrape the ice cream from the from the mother ice cream <laughs> into your bowl yeah into your bowl. basically you kind of like create your own ice cream and i love vanilla so as soon as i saw it was white i was like that's it sold so you should you should try it i like it now, the next one is called sueño andaluz and it's a bar that's famous for I, I our 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 neighbors took us to this bar and he said that they did yeah he said that they're famous for uh these clay mugs that they serve the beer in because the clay mugs are like super cold and then they put the beer in there and then you drink and then the beer tastes better because it's in clay Third one is called La Finestra, and this is in the, within the Ruzafa area. And we didn't know that the we always walk by this place, right? And there's it's always, always like, packed. It's a lot of people, and I wondered why. But then we went in, and we found out that they not only were their prices cheap; you could get pizza for two fifty and it's wine like for one fifty. But the the pizza's like this small. Yeah. They only have like three flavors for two fifty. It's either you get the vegetarian, the vegan, or the surprise, or you can get like a burrata pizza for five euros. Every time I order the surprise, like I don't like it, so I think I'll get the burrata next time. I don't know. When somebody else orders the surprise, I'm like, oh, I like what they put on theirs, but I don't like what they put on mine. So lucky for her. I get the one she likes, and then, just like a good old husband, I just sacrifice my dinner for her. Thanks, La Finestra. The fourth one is my favorite, and it's called Buñoleria El Contraste. And they make buñuelos. And on Thursdays, they make the buñuelos with naranja, with oranges, instead of with pumpkin, which is what Bonuelas are usually made of so it has a different taste to it you can really taste the oranges and it's also very reasonably priced you can also get some churros con chocolate here and it is also in rosafa yes and they serve they also serve porras which are like they do the, the bigger <laughs> The bigger version of churros, and they serve that on Wednesdays and Fridays. So look, make sure you look out for that. Last on the novelty list is called Mare Mewa. And this one is in the list because as soon as you walk in, you're going to see uh, this glass case where they display the pinchos on the case. And then you get to just choose whatever you want. Pinchos are kind of like giant tapas. And it's more of like a dinner. So uh, you get to choose. And then the the cool thing about that is when we saw that they were selling arepas, which is kind of like these corn, uh, corn bread things that you put. It's bread made with corn. Yeah. Um, we found out that the owner's Venezuelan, which made, you know, which so it's not them. necessarily like Spanish food. I think there's a Venezuelan twist to the food. And just seeing all the food laid out makes it more like, like yummy. Like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want that. It's a nice experience. All right, now we're going to talk about our favorites. This would be like if we're craving for something, usually these are the names that would pop up for us. So this is not Valencian food usually we try to go for something a little bit different because if you if we stop at a bar somewhere it's typically like Spanish tapas so if we're craving for something these would be like on our list the first one on our favorite list is called okay la and this was a pleasant surprise because we've 
kind of like struggled with looking for good Asian food here in Valencia. And as soon as we uh, went into Ojela, we discovered that not only do they serve Chinese food, they also serve Mongolian food. They also serve um, Indonesian, Malaysian. I think there's also some Thai and oh, uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese too. there was pho so it was a nice I think it was just like a pleasant surprise to see like all different dishes that we could try every visit and we were curious because why why do they serve all of these dishes not like just one right and we found out we met the owner Kenneth and we found out he's from he was born in Suriname and then he was raised in Holland and then he moved to Hong Kong for 11 years as a chef. And then he settled here in Valencia and then opened OK La. So all of these stories of the, the food, his, his experiences, we, we really appreciated it. So we highly suggest this restaurant. It's sure. a family-owned restaurant too. So sometimes you'll get to meet not just Kenneth, but his wife and his kids. And you'll get to talk to them. They speak in Dutch and and I think maybe Chinese and English and Spanish. So um, it's great for everybody. Really happy with Okela. Next one is Saona. So this is more of a chain and there's a few of them around the, the city. We liked it because their menu del dia is I think around just 10 euros and it comes with the starter, the main course, a, and the and the dessert and the variety of food was also very good very different from just spanish food that we used to see for menu del dia like i think i had what did i have tartar something tartar tuna, like tuna tartar and what else i had the uh, pasta uh, yeah, it's a it's a really nice mix of uh, uh, yeah, food. Yeah, of like, food. Like if you don't really know what you want, you'll probably find something there on that list. Correct. The third one on the list is uh, Ponko Ponko, which is an Asian fusion restaurant. And it's actually a Filipino fusion. So when, uh, when we walked by this restaurant, I'm like, hey, it's a Filipino restaurant. And then so we sat down and... Luckily enough, the owner's Filipino and the chef's Filipino, so it was easy for us to like ask questions um, and you know they get to like present to us what we should order. So we, we, really we usually eat the lechon because that's always hard to make and they have it, so it was easier to just order from there. If you're in a quick fix for some good old lechon kawale, punko punko will be the place for you. And try the pancit too, the pancit's good. And the adobo. So during our 24 hours in Valencia adventure, we decided with my to, cousin. with her cousin, we decided to stop by this restaurant. We were cra craving for Moroccan food. So we stopped by this restaurant called Restaurante a la Duac, and they had menu del dia, fortunately. So we gave it a shot. Yeah, the falafel was really good. I didn't order the menu del dia because I wanted the beef tajin. And thank goodness I did because it was actually enough for two people. It was big enough for two people. And it was made very well. The price also was very reasonable. They don't serve alcohol though. So just one thing to remember. Yeah. Well, they serve uh, sin, sin alcohol. So you, you can serve like... Uh, you can get beer that doesn't have any alcohol. Yeah, so they serve beer without any alcohol in it. And then right next to that, I think kind of as a competitor, a very close second is Al Muña, which is another Moroccan restaurant. This one had a little bit more flair. You go inside and it's very beautiful inside. You feel like you're in Morocco. The menu del dia also is very reasonably priced. I think it was 11 euros. And we also enjoyed their food there. But I think I liked the food in Aladwak just a little bit better. All right. But if you like uh, ambience, for sure, go to Almunia yeah. because they, it's a vibe. And also, like the, I think the servers were nice there too. Yeah. Very, very, I, I think like very, very friendly. And I think we had like a really nice dining experience there. Yeah. They're super sweet there. Yeah. So this is the like OG favorite, like 
This is far from where we live now. It's called Bar Convento. It's right next to the Torre de Quart. But it's one of the first bars where we tried patatas bravas and moro. So moro is, I think, the pig's face that's deep fried. But it's still our top. It's still our favorite. I think they make their bravas the best here out of all of the bravas we've tried. And again, it like it's also very popular. A lot of college kids go there because it's cheap eats, but it's good food. And they're so popular that actually, I think across the street is Bar Convento too. The, actually, the food there is it's nothing special, but the way they cook it, it's just perfectly cooked. So that's that's like I the, think the that's the bravas right. is like cut like nice and small with like the the aioli is more like a garlic aioli. Um, it's really crispy inside. What else? Like the moro is really crispy too. Yeah, it's just you know just uh, dining with the locals as well. I I think that's the most enjoyable part. You get to like experience it. And they have really good menu del dia. Next is El Rodamon, which is a bar in Rosafa. I encourage you to try their ensaladilla con bonito, which is their take on the Russian salad. So Russian salad is potato salad with some tuna on top. They put caviar on theirs, and I think it's just very... Like it has a different taste from all the other Russian salads that we've had. And they, they have a really nice selection of uh, liquor and wines and beers there. And make sure you look for our boy Bernie because... Yeah, Bernie's our favorite there. And we actually discovered our favorite rum there. It's called Legendario and it's Cuban rum. I don't know if you can get it in the States, but it is really good. And I want to thank El Rodamon for having that. Muchas gracias. Next, my favorite pizza. Filippa's is an Italian pizza joint, also in Rosafa, which is right next to El Rodamon. And they also make arancini, which is this little fried ball with meat and cheese in it. And I think some sauce, some some tomato sauce in it um, and the pizzas are always come out nice and perfect i usually get something with truffle on it and what do you usually get i think i get the carbonara pizza with with uh it has egg like a soft boiled egg mm-hmm. and but they cook the pizzas in a stone oven so it comes out really quick so make sure you're ready for fast food good food Fast, good food. The next one is called Beirut. It's a Lebanese restaurant, also in Rosafa. When you get their menu del dia, for me, my personal favorite, I forgot what it's called, but it's uh, it's like rice that's wrapped in this crunchy thing, and it has meat inside, and it's phenomenal. And mine is, um, my favorite is the yogurt with some chickpeas on it and some fried pita bread. And you kind of, that's your starter. So definitely a lot of things that you can try aside from just the usual shawarma or wrap. So Beirut, uh, and, and you know, and they're all in the menu del dia too. So you get to try a little bit of each. Make sure you visit that. Next is called Passage Paris, which is a pastry shop. And the owner, I believe, is French. And she makes these uh, pano chocolate that are really good. But then Paul also has a favorite. It's, I think, it's also like a pan au chocolate, but it's flat. Yeah, I, it's vin, vin wasari, so oh. I don't know what it's <laughs> called. But we asked our, our, our French neighbor and she said it's pan au chocolat. So. But it's like a flattened pan au chocolat, right? Yeah. But yeah, highly suggested by our French friends. Yes. So make sure you go. Next one is called Antigua Lecheria, which is an ice cream spot. And uh, it's owned by a, a couple who... I think they're make, Italian. Yeah. And then they hand make these, these ice creams in the back. And it's just 
so good. Yeah, everything like, is homemade. They have different flavors, a lot of different flavors. And I can't imagine that they all make it there, but they do. And yeah, it's just a, like a lovely time just picking and choosing which ones to get. And the pricing also is very good. And the last one on our list, which is a bonus, because if you're craving for Spanish food, but you don't really want to go out that's why this is a bonus is because in Rosafa there's this uh, uh, to take away place called Arrozarse and they make really 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 good paella yes like actually better than some of the famous paella places that we've been to Arroz Arce for a fraction of the price for like I think four or five euros you can you can take home a portion of that paella and I know it takes away the novelty because you're not eating out of the pan. That's why my cousin's like, no, I don't want to eat that. But, but to me, I think it is very good paella for the price. If, if you go to some restaurants, usually you have to order the paella for two. So it could cost starting from like 40 bucks. So this one at four euros, you get to try uh Paella Valenciana, I think it is one of the best deals out there. Oh, yeah. And then when you get there, they also have uh, pork ribs. They have pasta in there. And, you know, they're, they're served by Valenciano. So it's still authentic. It's just that you, you just eat it at home. Yeah. But we highly suggest it. Yeah, it's really good paella, actually. And that's the end of our list. Since this list was based on our taste, our preference, we really would appreciate it if you tell us what you think. Yeah, maybe we have bad palates. <laughs> That's my fear. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. But yeah, and if you have other favorite spots in Valencia that we didn't mention, let us know so we can try it out. We're always, you know excited to try new things we're up for an adventure we if you don't know us already we don't really like expensive food or super fine dining we want we want to dine with the locals we want to enjoy the food that the locals make so can't wait if you have anything that you would suggest we can't wait to we can't wait to see it all right, I hope you liked this video. It took us a long time to make because we tried so many different ones and took us a couple of, no, it took us 10 months to experience all of these. So we hope that we've given you a good list. Yeah, um, and we based on um, the people who visit Valencia um, and they tell us that they visited this place suggested by a blog or this place, I think you're going to enjoy this list because it's something that we've narrowed down <laughs> based on our taste. So that's it. This is why we're fat. Thank you. See you in the next video. Hasta luego.